Before we jump into the system demonstration, which is valid for both SAP ECC and SAP S4HANA GUI version, I brought you one slide to explain the process of a scheduling agreement. So first of all, a scheduling agreement is one of two types of an so-called outline agreement. The other type would be a contract. In a scheduling agreement, our company and the supplier have a long-term agreement between each other. The agreement states that the supplier will deliver us a defined amount of goods, let's say for instance wood, within a certain period, on predefined dates and also predefined conditions like prices. Our company will communicate the delivery dates and also the quantity needed via so-called delivery schedules. And one more important remark, scheduling agreements can be with a so-called release documentation or even without a release documentation. And the difference here is that for a scheduling agreement with release documentation, the scheduling lines that we create within those delivery schedules over here will not be automatically transmitted to our vendor. So we will not be automatically informed as soon as we create and post the delivery schedule, but only after we released it. And without release documentation would mean in the second that we post or save our delivery schedule, the information will be forwarded to our supplier. Let's now jump into the system to see this in action. And make sure to subscribe to the channel. We will now create a scheduling agreement out of a purchase requisition, which is one way of how we can do it. So let's create a purchase requisition via ME51N. I've already shown you this in another video. We need to select a document type called RV, which is for an outline agreement requisition. As you've learned before, a scheduling agreement is one type of an outline agreement. We click on source determination, provide our material, then at least our plant and the storage location and the quantity, let's say 20. Then we select our source of supply and that's basically it. Let's save the purchasing requisition, copy it and navigate to transaction code slash N M E 31. L, that's slash N M E 31 L. We need to provide the supplier from whom we want to order the materials. Then, as I've shown you before in the presentation, we can select the agreement type LP for a direct release or LPA respectively for a manual release. In our case, we will select LP. Then we select over here reference to a purchasing requisition, the one we just created. We could also reference the scheduling agreement with regard to a request for quotation or a contract. Let's click on reference to purchasing requisition, insert the purchasing requisition over here and click on enter. Then we need to provide a validity end date of our scheduling agreement. So our scheduling agreement will be valid for the whole year. And then we hit on enter again. Now our purchasing requisition that we just created is displayed over here. So we select it and click on adapt and details. We could now adjust the target quantity if needed, but for now we leave it as is. So we want to consume 20 pieces for the validity period that we just defined. The net order price will also stay the same. We hit on enter. We can see we only want to procure one item and then we save. As you can see, we received a message saying no message record could be found for the output message. This is because we have to define our condition record in the message determination. So in this case, our vendor must be defined in the message determination because this vendor should receive a message. So let's click on the lines over here, create session. Then we navigate to transaction code NACE, that's NACE, and we select purchasing outline agreement, which is the application EV, and click on condition records. Then we select outline agreement, this is output type NAU and now we have to select a key combination. In our case, the vendor to whom a message should be issued will be determined by the document type, the purchasing organization and the vendor combination. So we select this one and choose enter. Afterwards, we go to more output condition create. We insert our supplier over here, then the function. So this is the partner function. The medium we want to print. The dispatch time, we want it directly to be dispatched and the language, let's say English. Then we select our entry, go to communication and over here we provide an output device. Now we can save. The condition record has been saved. 
Let's go back to our scheduling agreement, then click on save. And you can see the scheduling agreement was created successfully and the number was issued by the system. Now it's time to maintain the delivery schedule via transaction code slash n me38. That's slash n me38. We select our scheduling agreement and hit enter. And all we now need to do is select our item, go to more item delivery schedule or alternatively shift and F5 on your keyboard. So all we need to do is include when we want a certain amount of goods to be delivered. First of all, we have here a column called delivery date category. So let me just open this. Let's select the date format over here. The delivery date, let's say it should be delivered next week on Wednesday, the first one. Schedule quantity 10 pieces and the time it should arrive, let's say 10 a.m. Now we include another line because this is the whole point of a delivery schedule. So the total quantity we want to receive within the agreed period is now separated into several delivery dates. So let's say the next one would be one week after and so on. So we will take here the 5th of October and also 10 pieces. Time should again be 10. So we can see now the total quantity that will be consumed is 20 pieces. And that's basically it. Let's save this one. And we again have the issue that no message record could be found for the output message. In our case, we are working with the agreement type LP. This means that normally when saving the delivery schedule, the information is directly transmitted to our vendor. So therefore we would need again, a condition record to be maintained. So let's go to these three lines over here, new GUI window. This time we navigate to transaction code MN10. That's MN10. Over here, we select the output type called LPH1. That's LPH1. We select the combination document type purchasing organization vendor. We maintain our supplier again, the function, the medium, and dispatch time, as well as the language. Then we select the entry, click on communication, and provide our output device for the print. Then we save our entry. And the delivery schedule for our scheduling agreement has been created successfully. Now all that's left is that once we receive our goods, we need to post the goods received. So just imagine that we received our first delivery that we just defined in the delivery schedule. And now we need to post a goods received. So we copy the number, we go to transaction code slash n m i g o that's slash n m i g o over here. We go to goods received out of a purchase order, provide the number and hit enter. Now you can see document does not contain any selectable items. This is because we can first create a goods received once the items arrived. And in the delivery schedule, we defined that one item will arrive in a couple of days up from now. So now I will create another one in the background that we can utilize where we imagine that one of the dates of our delivery schedule is today. Let me change the reference document over here. And now you can see we can select the first 10 pieces because we received them today. Let me just close the detailed view over here. We hit on OK. So we received 10 pieces. So now we can click on post. And now the last step is to create an invoice. This is done by transaction code slash n m i r o that slash n m i r o. Insert the invoice date. We insert our scheduling agreement over here, hit enter. For now, we will say there is no tax included over here. We include also our tax code. Then we say the amount is 100. So the balance is green, as you can see, and we can post. And this marks the end. So to summarize, we created a scheduling agreement via ME31L. Then it's optional to transmit this agreement to the vendor because there are different ways to do so. I will make a separate video about message determination. So how we can actually optimize this and send it, for instance, via mail. Then we maintain the delivery schedule for our scheduling agreement to tell our vendor when exactly we want to receive what portion of our total agreement. Then also we can transfer the delivery schedule to the vendor. Then we post 
a goods receipt once we receive the goods and then we post an invoice receipt. Yeah, this marks the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please subscribe to the channel to not miss any more videos and see you next time.